Hi friends, and welcome to Nona Kids Online. My name is Bonnie, the director of Anona Kids, and I am so glad you're here. In just a moment, you will get to watch our Anona Kids Live Sunday morning experience with worship, a Bible story, an important message, and so much more. This is what we do here at Anona Kids every week. If you are doing church from home, that is awesome. I hope that we will see you someday soon in Anona Kids. Until then, you can click the link below to access your church from home resources with a fun game, discussion guide, a prayer, and more that you and your family can still go deep into the Bible story, even from your living room. All right, I think we're almost ready to head into Anona Kids. Are you ready? Let's go. Hi, everyone. My name is Vicki. Welcome to Anona Kids. It is time once again to start the party. We are celebrating the good news of Jesus all summer long. It's getting easier and easier to find joy all around you, don't you think? So I am Amanda, and I am so happy to be here with you guys today. Anona Kids is the place where super fun and crazy kids like you get to come and have fun with your friends and grow in your faith together. So while we get to experience God's great big love and learn about something called the big idea. So what is the big idea, you might ask? So the big idea is something we focus on each month, and it's something that God does inside of us to change the world around us. Mm -hmm. And God puts these things inside of us, every single one of us, qualities like love and joy and wisdom and kindness. This month, our big idea is joy. And joy is choosing to celebrate what God is doing. God is at work in our lives all the time. And we can see that by looking around at all of the good things that he's given us and the way that he helps us every single day. We can see what God is doing in the lives of the people we love when we take the time to notice the way that God is working in the world around us. We can always find joy. Joy is choosing to celebrate what God is doing. In fact, God made us to have joy. Joy isn't based on what our lives are like on the outside. Joy is something that God's spirit creates inside of us. So being joyful is part of a healthy life. And our memory verse from Proverbs 17:22 is a great reminder of that. Will you read it with me? A cheerful, a cheerful heart, heart makes, makes you, you healthy, healthy but, a but a broken, broken spirit dries you up. up. <laughs> so sometimes it can be really hard to find joy, but we can do it with God's help. We can always celebrate what God is doing in our lives. So let's stand and get ready to sing and celebrate God together. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Sabrina, and I'm so excited to worship God with you, all you today. God's love fills us with joy. I know it fills me up too. It fills us up so we can share joy with others too. As we read Moses' prayer from Psalm 9014, Satisfy us with your faithful love every morning. Then we can sing for joy and be glad all our days. I want that kind of joy in my life. And I believe that thankful people have an extra dose of joy in their life. So let's get ready to move as we worship God for the next song. Party people, where you at? Uh. It's time to celebrate. It's time to get it started. The party's happening here. That's right. I turn up the music loud. We got a reason to cheer
hour. Phew. Great job singing and dancing. And thank you for taking a seat. This month we're talking about the joy that Jesus gives us. Joy is choosing to celebrate what God is doing. And we are looking at a small book towards the end of the Old Testament in the Bible called Habakkuk. Habakkuk. I'm having a hard time saying Habakkuk. Habakkuk. Say it with us. Habakkuk. Habakkuk. Habakkuk was a prophet. And a prophet is someone who shares a message from God with the people around them. As we read the words of the prophets in the Bible, we find that they usually share messages to remind us not to turn away from God, but to keep following God faithfully. Many of the books of the prophets that we find in the Old Testament were written during the last years of the kingdoms of Israel and Judah. And at first, God's people had all been one nation together. But then the kingdom split into two nations, Israel and Judah. Eventually, the northern kingdom of Israel was captured. And a little while later, the southern kingdom of Judah was surrounded by enemies. Oh, wow. It was a really difficult time. Mm. It was during this time that Habakkuk wrote the words to the people of Judah that we're going to look at in today's Bible story. Hey everyone, I'm Erica, and I'm excited that I get to say Habakkuk a lot today. <laughs> Habakkuk. Okay, so Habakkuk has a fun name, but he lived in Jerusalem during a very difficult time. The northern kingdom of Israel had already been conquered. The southern kingdom of Judah was still free, but enemies were closing in on all sides. Everywhere Habakkuk looked, he saw things going wrong and falling apart. Even in his own country, people had forgotten God. They were fighting with each other and treating others unfairly. Habakkuk called on God. Lord, I know how famous you are. I have great respect for you because of your mighty acts. Do them again for us. Make them known in our time. Habakkuk cried out to God to come and fix all these terrible things. And God answered telling Habakkuk to write it all down. In the end, God promises to bring justice. In the perfect time, everything will be made right again. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let the whole earth be silent in front of him. At this point, Habakkuk had a choice. He could look at what was happening around him and panic and lose hope, or Habakkuk could look at the way God had worked in the lives of the Israelites over and over. He could trust God's promise to bring good out of hard things and right all wrongs. Habakkuk recorded his conversation with God, and at the end, he came to this conclusion. The fig trees might not bud. The vines might not produce any grapes. The olive crop might fail. The fields might not produce any food. There might not be any sheep in the pens. There might not be any cattle in the barns. But I will still be glad because of what the Lord has done. God, my Savior, fills me with joy. When terrible things happen, joy does not top our list of feelings. But in the middle of chaos and hardship, Habakkuk chose joy. Let's take a closer look. The fig trees might not bud. The vines might not produce any grapes. The olive crop might fail. The fields might not produce any food. There might not be any sheep in the pens. There might not be any cattle in the barns. Let's be real. If the fig trees don't do so well this year, you probably won't be affected. I mean, unless you really like fig bars. But in Habakkuk's time, the Israelites mostly made a living by farming. They either ate what they grew or what someone nearby grew. So if the crops failed, it was devastating. It meant that no one had enough to eat. The people could starve. Now, it's not a big deal for us now if olives don't have a bumper crop, but there are lots of things in our lives that can go wrong in a big way too. Maybe one of your parents loses their job. Maybe you find out someone in your family is really sick. Maybe your best friend starts hanging out with someone else instead. Maybe you won't be able to play soccer unless you get your math grade up, which feels impossible. Odds are, 
You can't control the bad thing that's happened, but you can control how you respond. If you focus only on what's wrong, you'll feel hopeless and overwhelmed. But you can choose to take your focus off of your problems, real though they are, and look to God. You can remember how God has helped you in the past and how God promises to make everything right in the future. This is how Habakkuk was able to say, but I will still be glad because of what the Lord has done. God, my savior, fills me with joy. Through Jesus, you will be able to live forever with God. That doesn't make your current troubles any less difficult, but it does mean that you can find peace and joy in the midst of them and discover that there's always a reason to celebrate. The end. Wow, what a great story. We can all learn a lot from our friend Habakkuk. A lot of bad stuff was happening to him, a lot, but he chose to trust in God and we have that choice too. We can focus on everything that's going wrong or we can put our focus on the hope that we have in God. We can remember how God has helped us in the past and how God will make everything right in the future. I'm not saying that what we are gonna face won't be hard or that it'll be easy, but just remember that you can trust God even when things aren't going your way. And you can choose to find joy because you believe that God is with you. So God loves you and that God is in control. Thank goodness for mm -hmm. that. <clears throat> That's right. You can find joy when you remember that God sent Jesus to be your savior. And that is something that we can celebrate no matter what is going on in our lives. There's always a reason to celebrate. And when we face tough times in life, we can find joy by taking a look what God has done in the past, like Amanda said, and see where he was there for us before and trust that he is always working in our lives even when we can't see it. Our memory verse for this month reminds us of what can happen when we choose to have joy. A cheerful, a cheerful heart makes, makes you healthy, healthy but, but a broken, broken spirit, spirit dries you up. Uh, let's pray together and ask God to help us find joy when those tough seasons come. Everybody put your praying hands together. Oh, dear God, thank you so much for always being with us in the good times and in the tough times too. We know that when we follow you, your Holy Spirit lives inside of us. You comfort us in hard times. You can help us choose joy even when things don't go the way we want them to. Thank you for always giving us a reason to celebrate because of how much you love us and because you sent Jesus for us. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What did you think about that message? Did you learn something new? I love learning with you every week in Anona Kids about the big idea and God's great big love. I am so glad that we get to hear about God's great big story and how we can live for God every day. Parents, now is a great time for you to click the link below to check out the Church From Home resources. You will learn more about the big idea, the memory verse, play a game, and discuss as a family more about what we learned together today. Now, let's say the benediction together. The benediction is a blessing that we say as we go out into the world to share God's great big love with everyone we meet. Let's say it together. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Now, I am so glad that you are here and that we could be together today. Don't forget, Anona Kids meets every Sunday at 9.30 a.m., and I hope that you can join us soon. Stick around for a minute to check out these announcements, and I hope you have a great week. See you next time. Love you. Bye.